Hello and welcome to my YouTube live show. Welcome. God bless everyone who just joined in. Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Give me a one in the live chat if you can hear me so we can start today's live show. Thank you very much, Marion and others. Thank you. God bless you. So the sound seems clear, right? Nice, nice, nice. Thank you for joining in. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is false. And Islam is nothing but a satanic religion. Today, guys, we wanted to talk about the Ahmadidat, who Muslims claim to be the Islamic knight of his lifetime. As we know, Ahmadidat, around 30 years ago he was considered to be a very famous sheikh or imam who could refute Christianity and the Bible. He loved to attack the Bible, the Holy Bible of our living God, the living God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But at the same time he was nothing but a hypocrite. I mean doesn't the Quran of Allah confirm the Injil and the Torah? Huh? Ahmadidad? Doesn't the Quran says Musaddiqan bayna yadayhi? Didn't Muhammad himself not swear on the Torah when he asked for the Torah to bring the, the Torah and to judge by the Torah? So, you know, Muslims, they love to have a cake and eat it too. Their Prophet judged by the Torah. So how can the Prophet of Islam judge by the Torah, but Muslims love to contradict their own Prophet, call their Prophet a liar, while their Prophet never said that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted. Actually, he confirmed the Torah and Injil. And why? Why did he do that? Why did he confirm the Torah and the Injil, which is the Gospel? Because Muhammad when he went to Medina, he wanted to become friends with the Jews, right? Remember? He loved to reconcile with the Jews. But when the Jews knew that this guy is nothing but a fake prophet, they rejected him. So Muhammad changed his mind and he started to attack the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? The Jews and the Christians, of course. And he later, in one of the last chapters, chapter 9, chapter Toba, or the nickname for the chapter is Chapter of the Sword, he forced the Jizya, the Mafia protection money on the Christians and the Jews, who he called the people of the book. Like we said on today's live broadcast, we will have the opportunity to have a nice teaching together, guys. We will go and watch a couple of uh, videos of Ahmed Hidad. And we will put this Mr. Ahmed Itad that Muslims are so proud about. Still after 30 years, they are using his own tactics that we already rebuked many times over. They're still using the same tactics, right? When they debate Christians and Jews. So we'll put Ahmed Itad today to the test and see if this so-called Sheikh Ahmed Itad, who could not speak Arabic, to see if he's a deceiver or not. This guy was from South Africa. He was certainly not an Arab. He could not speak Arabic. He's not from the Middle East, right? So we'll see what will happen today. And last but not least, when I finish today's teaching, in the end, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat, either about today's topic or Islam in general. So in other words, you can ask me question about today's teaching. So if you have any questions, please keep them with you till the end. So write them down, uh, use notepad or whatever to not forget your questions, put them on paper so you can ask me the questions later. Please ask me your questions. I'm here to answer questions today. Okay. 
So please wait with your questions till we are done teaching. And like I said, I will try to answer as far as I can. Muslims also in the end can also call us live on Skype. I will uh, put my Skype on so they can call in. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian without separation. The Rob Christian and they can call us so we can have a nice respectful discussion about today's topic. Let's see if there are any Muslims who have the courage and the knowledge to call in to refute me today. Like I said, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Maybe someone in the text can put it in the text so people can use it, especially in this case, the Muslims. So if you are a Christian, please don't call me. If you are a Muslim, please call me in the end when I finish my teaching. So again, guys, thank you for joining in. Before we start, let us pray together. What do you think, guys? Should we pray? Should we pray today? I think it's good to pray, right? Before we, we start. So we will ask God to guide us. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, please give me the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deceptions. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. The devil is scheming, Lord. And I know he desires to keep us from you, Lord, from spending time with you. Thank you for your grace, Lord. And because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved son, we are certainly saved, as you promised in your holy book. Please, Lord, guide us so we can also forgive others who curse us or maybe persecute us because we are followers of your holy and sinless Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name, Father. Lord, please give me strength when I'm weak and in need of your comfort, today and always. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception and doubt, Lord. Please, Lord, please help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus' name, your Son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to say welcome to everyone who just joined in. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet and Islam is false. Today's topic, guys, is Mr. Ahmed Didad. The debater and sheikh of his lifetime you know muslims are still proud about ahmadiyya whenever you ask a muslim what do you think about ahmadiyya they, they will say he is one of the best he's, he's according to people some people still he's the, the best that, that they had imagine guys and we're talking about a guy who lived 30 years ago and this guy unfortunately i don't like to talk about it but he challenged his god his creator and he said if i'm lying and I quote, guys, he said, if I'm lying, may God silence me. Later, later, guys, we know what happened to Sheikh Ahmed Didad, unfortunately. I don't want to speak ill about this gentleman, right? So please, guys, don't mock Muslims because those people are really in need. This is why we are doing this, right? Sometimes I can be very harsh, right? We have to be bold sometimes. I mean, Jesus was not a hippie, right? Jesus used the whip and he rebuked the Pharisees, the, the, the satanic Pharisees, the Jewish leaders who rejected him. He rebuked them in a very bold way. And that's what we are doing, right, guys? That's what we are doing every, every time day in, day out. So, Mr. Ahmadidad. Mr. Ahmadidad. 
If you notice guys, I already made two videos about Mr. Ahmadidat. You can find them in my other, between my other videos. And I like to bring uh, the topic of Ahmadidat once more because you know, sometimes people might miss our videos and I lately I <laughs> have recorded a lot of videos so sometimes you will miss it or whatnot so it's nice to bring some topics back but today we'll try to bring some new material to uh, rebuke uh, this Ahmadiyya so let us start guys so if you have questions guys write them down like I said keep them to till the end and please don't hesitate or be shy to ask them right uh, I want to thank also uh, our admin Renfer and maybe some other admins who will join in. Uh, Longius of Jerusalem, thank you too for joining in to help us, to help, help me, to help you guys. Thank you for your support and your hard work. Pray for us guys, pray for me, pray for our warriors, pray for our admins because we are putting our lives in the front lines, right? So, let us start today guys. Let's see. I went on YouTube and I looked for some YouTube videos of Ahmadidat. As you see in front of you, this is a debate that I found from Ahmadidat with uh, a Christian Arabic speaker, Anish Sharush. Now, Anish Sharush was the first Arabic speaking Christian, let's say, like almost 30 years ago. Oh, it is oh, yeah, 30 years ago, who stood up to debate Ahmadidat. And it's, uh, let's, be, let's be real, guys. It's not really easy for Arabic-speaking Christians to debate Muslims in a public uh, debate, right? Because even back then, it was really hard and it was really dangerous. And I think this debate happened in, if I'm not mistaken, in South Africa, in the home country of Ahmadidat. And any Sharosh really spanked Ahmadidat. Uh, but I think uh, if it would have, could have been now, if Ahmadidat was still alive, we would have done a much better job. Any Sharosh, I believe any Sharosh could have done a much better uh, job because some people say, who uh, can, might be politically correct, that any Sharosh and Ahmadidat, it was like a draw, right? It was like a 1 1. No one won basically the debate. Uh, of course, Muslims will say, the dishonest Muslims will say, Ahmadidat, he spanked any Sharush, the Christian, during that debate. But we don't agree. You know, some Christians say any Sharush won the debate, others will say, no, it's Ahmadidat. And all, uh, other people will say, yeah, it was a draw, right? But in the end, it's not about winning. It's all about the truth, right, guys? It's all about the truth, and only the truth will set us free. And who is the truth? It's Jesus Christ, right? He's Al-Haq, right? In the Arabic, Al-Haq means the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and life. Glory to his name. So, let me start playing this uh, video. Please let me know if you can hear the sound, okay? I hope the sound will be crystal clear. Give me one if you can hear the sound. Let me start the video. Then, can you hear something, guys? When to can you hear it? Give me one if you can hear it. Okay. Let me go back a little. All right. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so here you will first hear uh, Ahmadidat attacking the Bible, and especially Samson. You, you remember Samson, right, guys? Samson, the guy with the long hair who uh, defeated a big uh, army, right? So he will attack Samson. Now watch, guys. Pay attention, take notes. And see how I'm going to spank Ahmadidat. Right? See how I'm going to spank Ahmadidat. Let me also put my headset on so I can listen carefully to what Ahmadidat says. Because we need to uh, listen carefully to what they say so we can spank them. This is live, guys. Pay attention what will happen. Take notes. Then Samson went to Gaza 
and he saw a harlot, a whore, a prostitute. And so, guys, so here Ahmad Ida is saying, Samson, he went to Gaza and saw a harlot, a whore there, and he went into her. So basically, Samson went to sleep with her. Okay, let us continue. I mean, Samson, he was a sinner like you and me, right? He's a person, a famous person in the Old Testament, and he was a sinner like you and me, and people do sin, right? So let us continue, guys. And he went in unto her. Full stop. Come on, come on, tell me now. What does it teach you? Samson goes to Gaza, and he sees a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, and he goes in unto her. Full stop. Nothing more. There's not a single redeeming word or phrase. Well, you see? So this guy is attacking Samson. So he's, he's basically saying, oh, look at this guy, this famous guy in the in the Holy Bible, in the name or shape of Samson. And he went to have a nice time with a whore. But wait a second, Ahmed Idad, Ahmed Idad. Are you going to make a cake and eat it too? I mean, let, let's, let's go see who Samson is, guys, before we continue. Samson, guys, or Shimshon, man of the sun, was the last of the judges of the ancient Israelites mentioned in the book of Judges, in the Hebrew Bible, chapter 13 to 16. And one of the last of the leaders who judged Israel before the institution of the monarchy. So he was one of, of the last judges. He was not a prophet, right? He was not a prophet, like Muhammad, right? Muhammad is a prophet, so he should, he should give a good example, right? We know Samson, he was a normal guy like you and me. God gave him power and he defeated a big, large army, right? So, Ahmadidad, you heard him, he wants to show you, or basically tell the audience that, look, look, the Bible is talking about a guy who is going to have a nice time with a whore. But wait a second, Ahmadidad. Your own Quran, <laughs> your own Quran in chapter 4, in Surah An Nisa, chapter 4, Surah An Nisa, ayah 24, is allowing Muslims to have sex with sex slaves. Right? Whom your right hand possesses. Those are the captives, the sex slaves, right? It's a degree of Allah. So Allah is allowing you to have sex slaves. Right? He's allowing you to have sex slaves. مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانَكُمْ And if we continue reading, it says, فَمَا إِسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْهُنَّ فَأُوتُهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ Basically, it means... If you want to have a nice nikah, right? Sex with a lady, you give her, you give her money, and you can have sex with her for a temporary period. So this is prostitution. Allah is allowing you to have a sexual act with another woman for a period, a small period. But Mr. Ahmadi Dad wants to tell you and attack the Bible. Wait, here, here we are talking about Samson. And look what Samson is doing. Look, look at this guy. Look what kind of bad book the Holy Bible is. But at the same time, this Mr. Ahmadi Dad is nothing but a munafiq, a hypocrite. Right? A hypocrite. Because prostitution is allowed in the Quran, right? sex slaves and you can have prostitution sexual intercourse with a prostitute basically for a small amount of time and you have to give her her dowry right you have to give her money so mr ahmadi dad he wants to have a cake and eat it too he's not looking in 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 his own mirror First, take out the nail from your own eyes, Mr. Ahmad Dida. And if we go to the hadith, guys, this is Sahih Muslim, hadith number 
1249, it says, While I was in the company of Jabir, a person, a person came and said, There is difference of opinion among Ibn Abbas and Ibn Zubair about two mutas. <laughs> you see, this is the prostitution right there. From chapter 424. The mut'a. Temporary marriage, right? That's what they call it. It's nothing but prostitution. <laughs> Benefits tamattul in al-hajj and temporary marriage with women. Did you catch it, guys? So we have mut'a number one that you can do during hajj. And mut'a number two is you have something called temporary marriage with women, which is nothing but prostitution. You give her money, you, you can F her for a couple of, of, of hours, and then she can go. It's nothing but prostitution. Whereupon Jibir said, we have been doing this during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger. Did you catch it? So this happened in the time of Muhammad. Muhammad did it, his companions, his Sahaba did it. Mr. Ahmad Idad. You see guys, this guy calls himself a Sheikh, but he has no clue about the prostitution that was happened during the lifetime of his own fake prophet. Muhammad. And who is the one who forbade it? And then Omar, Omar, not Muhammad, <laughs> guys, it was Omar. Last time I checked, Omar was not a prophet. So who gave Omar the authority to forbid Mut'a? Huh? Who, who in the world gave Omar the authority to forbid the Mut'a? sexual intercourse, the prostitution, this ayah, who gave him the authority to abrogate this ayah? You see? Muhammad seems not to be the last prophet in Islam. The prophet Omar, exactly that pill. Muslims say Muhammad is the last prophet, but we hear clearly, Omar is the last prophet. You see? And Fadi Harun yeah, says, Surah at tawbah admits that Muhammad was caught in an act of prostitution. Yeah. You see, guys? So, Mr. Ahmad Idad, he loves to talk about a sinner like Samson, who went to have a nice time with a lady. Right? With a woman. But he doesn't want to talk about his own prostitution inside Islam, which was, which was made legal by Allah himself. You can have sex slaves and you can have muta, which is nothing but prostitution. And who, the one who forbid muta was Omar, not Muhammad in the end. This is why, guys, pay attention, take notes. This is why Shia still practice muta, because they reject Omar. Right? Shia spit Omar out. They curse him every day. They curse Omar. They curse Abu Bakr, they curse Aisha and Hafza, right? So this is why Shia still practice Muta'i from chapter 4, ayah 24. Did you catch it? Because they don't follow Omar. They follow Ali, Hassan and Hussein, right? The family of uh, Muhammad, basically. Ahlul Bayt. The family of the Prophet. And from other hadith we can read, this is Sahih al bukhari Sahih, 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 with a little bit echo, guys, always, right? So Muslims can pay attention. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al bukhari So they don't say this is false or da'if hadith. This is Sahih al bukhari Hadith number 5075, we can read, We used to participate in the holy battles, pay attention, guys, led by Allah's messenger, Muhammad, right? And we had nothing... No wives. So the boys, right, the gang of Muhammad, the homeboys, that's what I love to call them, the homeboys of Muhammad, his gang, right, they had no women with them. So the companions, the Sahaba of Muhammad said to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, shall we get ourselves castrated? Shall we cut uh, uh, off our uh, ding dong? Shall we cut it off? Shall we cut off our male parts? <laughs> so they wanted to castrate themselves because, you know, these people, uh, maybe, you know, uh, they seem to be uh, so-called respectful people, 
respectful companion, they don't want to go and rape women, so they rather castrate their ding dong, right? But look what Muhammad said. So I'm going to show you that the companions of Muhammad are much better than the Prophet of Islam. Muhammad, he forbade us that. So Muhammad forbid them to cut off their male parts, right? Their penises. And then allowed us to marry women. You know, it's nothing called marry. It's ding dong, bang bang, you know. To have sexual intercourse with women with a temporary contract, which is, which is the muta. Remember, guys? Did you catch it? And recited to us, oh, so Muhammad recited to them, oh, you who believe, make not unlawful the good things. So, you know, prostitution is, according to Muhammad, a good thing, which Allah has made lawful for you. So, Allah is the one making lawful. So, here, Allah is the one who giving permission to have sexual intercourse. Did you catch it, guys? Allah is the one who is allowing muta, prostitution. But commit no trans transgression. So it's okay to have sexual intercourse, but you know, don't go too far, according to Muhammad. Don't rape too much. You can rape, but don't rape. <laughs> Lord have mercy. This is Sahih al Bukhar. Sahih, Sahih. So, Mr. Ahmed, Dad, why are you not talking about your pro own prostitution in Islam? Why are you attacking a very sinner, a sinful person like Samson? He was not perfect, guys. He was like you and me. We are all sinners. We all, we all need to be forgiven. Our sins to be forgiven, right? This is why we needed Jesus to come in as the eternal word of God to save us from our sins. Because we are nothing but sinners. We sin every day. Right? But here we have a prophet who is allowing his own companions to do prostitution. Which is really an evil sin, right? So Mr. Ahmadidat, you want to have... A cake and eat it too. And some from Sahih Muslim, Allah's Messenger permitted temporary marriage. It's everywhere. You can find it here. Here's the hadith number. You can find it all over the hadith, guys. It's everywhere. Right? Again, in another hadith, same Sahih Muslim again. It's all everywhere, right? Here again from Sahih Muslim from an, another hadith number 1405a. Allah's Messenger allowing, granted you permission to per benefit yourselves, i.e., to contract muta, prostitution. You catch it? So it's everywhere. You can find it everywhere. All right? So let us continue, guys. Mr. Ahmadidad, you're nothing but a hypocrite. Munafiq. Prostitution is allowed by Allah and allowed by Muhammad, but it was forbidden by who? By Omar. In the end, it was forbidden by Omar, not no one else. Not by Muhammad. So Omar is the final prophet in Islam. Thank you for getting spanked again, Ahmadidad. Let us continue this. Maybe this was a Palestinian whore or prostitute. So it means nothing. So it's a Palestinian. Maybe if she was an Israeli whore, it might have meant something. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was not an Israeli. You see, you see how the audience are clapping, guys? <laughs> clap, clap, Ahmadiyya. You're doing a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So God didn't give him AIDS. He didn't give him VD. Didn't give Did the Allah give Muhammad AIDS? Did Allah give uh, Muhammad uh, gonorrhea? We know Muhammad had issues with his uh, sexual organ, right? Muhammad used to sit down and pee like a, a woman, right? He never stood up to pee. He always sat down. And his seed was no good. All of his seed died, right? Remember, guys? The seed of Muhammad died. Right? Why did Allah not give him healthy children? Muhammad did not produce one healthy child. They all died. Right? Right? And there are studies that can show us that Muhammad actually, if we study carefully, because Muhammad used to fall down with foam on his mouth, right? Shaking on the ground when he so-called re uh, received divine revelation from Allah. Those are, guys, if we study carefully, those are symptoms of a sexual disease, an STD. I don't want to go too far off topic, guys. But, yeah. 
Why are you talking about your own Prophet and Sahaba who had prostitution? Right? Lord knows how many STDs the companions have because they had sexual intercourse left and right with female captives doing muta and whatnot. Fadi Harun, all the companions, all the companions of Muhammad. I'm not sure, I think Hassan and Hussein were young boys in the time of Muhammad. They were too young, far too young, because Muhammad, you know, remember the story in the hadith where Muhammad gave a nice French kiss to one of the sons of Ali. I can't remember if it was Hassan or Hussein, but he gave him a nice French kiss, right? You know what a French kiss is, right? If you don't know, ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him, he will grant you the answer. You know, Prophet Google uh, at least answers. Muslims, when we ask them questions, they don't answer. So, yeah. So let us continue, guys, and listen to this hypocrite. Jim Kunwari, yeah? nothing, nothing, nothing. This great hero, he went to Gaza and he went into her. The more modern Bible, they say he sw spent a night with her. Oh. What doing? Sorry, what? guys. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look, how, look how he's making fun. Look how he's making fun of Samson. You Satan worshipper. What is the moral? What's the moral yeah, of prostitution in Islam? The Christians. Yeah, the Christians say. They say the Quran is forged. That's true. It is copied from the Jews and the Christians. That's true. Remember, guys? You know how many stories Muhammad stole from our Holy Bible. He also not only stole stories from a holy Bible, he stole stories from Christian le legend stories. He stole stories from the Jewish legend story. He stole stories from the Talmud, which is not man uh, not divine, right? Yeah, he copied and he played with the true stories and he gave his own version, right? So he was nothing but a stealer of stories. He stole also from Amr al-Qais, remember guys? We mentioned that, I think, last time, right? I'm Rul Qais. Hey, Rene, God bless you, welcome. God bless everyone who just joined in. Nice to have you with us. So, you know, he's talking about us, how we are spanking Islam. So now he's going to turn it on us. So he's going to talk about the corruption of the Injil and the Torah of Allah. Right? Guys, whenever you have a, whenever you have a Muslim who loves to talk about the corruption, Give the ball back to them. Tell them, are you going to tell me? Guys, tell them, are you going to tell me that the book of Allah, the scripture of Allah is corrupt? Don't, don't make it too hard on yourself, right? Are you telling me that the book of Allah, that Allah sent, Allah allowed them to be corrupted? What? What kind of God would allow such things to happen? So when they are attacking, guys, ask them, when did the corruption happen? Where did it happen? Certainly not in the time of Muhammad. Because remember guys, Muhammad asked for the Torah and he put the Torah on the judge cushion and he swore on the Torah and he judged by the Torah. So how did Muhammad actually judge by the Torah if the Torah is corrupted? So are you telling me your fake prophet, your prophet Muhammad judged by a corrupted Torah? That doesn't make sense, right? Anyway, let us continue. I'm asking, what is there to copy? What have you got that is worth copying? Uh, a lot. <laughs> Muhammad stole stories from the Holy Bible left and right. What are you talking about, Ahmadi? That I think this guy, guys, this guy, before this debate with Anish Sharush, I think he smoked something. Ahmadi, that lay down the pipe, man. Your fake prophet copied a lot from our Holy Bible, right? But he gave his own twist. He took stories and he changed them, right? What kind of, what kind of liar is this guy, man? What about the seven sleeper story, guys? This is not a story from the Holy Bible, right? This was a Christian story written in the year 250 by a monk by a priest, a Christian monk or priest, man-made story, what is it doing in the Quran? Right? Ashab al-Kaf, right? 
the story of the cave people, the seven sleepers, you know. Muhammad told that story and he changed it. The story goes like this. A guardian in the form of an angel is keeping the entrance of the cave safe. Right? What did Muhammad do? He stole a story and he changed the story from an angel to a dog. How can a dog keep the cave safe from the Romans who are persecuting the seven sleepers which were Christians? How is, going, how is this tiny dog going to keep the Christians safe from a Roman army? That doesn't make sense. So Muhammad changed the word which was Kaliahum, their guardian, Kaliahum, he cha changed it to Kelbahum, their dog. So this is a, an example of how Muhammad corrupted the story. And Muslims, when they started to put dots, right, in the Arabic text, because much later in the 9th and the 10th century, the Arabic text itself started to change. Dots started to appear. Tashkil, right? Dhamma, Fatha, Kasra, right? The, the vowels, the dots started to appear in the Arabic text. And Muslims, when they did that, they corrupted the Quran. Instead of pointing the, the dot on the, on the right side, they put it in the wrong side. Right? Because a word can change if you put it uh, on top or under. The, the word can have a different meaning, right? So, Kaliyahum became Kelbahum. Corruption on top of corruption of the fake Quran, the satanic Quran of Muhammad. Let's continue. Now he's going to talk about incest in our holy when you scripture. you with your own mother, your own daughter, your own sister, your own daughter-in-law, that is incest. There are ten cases of incest in this book of God. Ten. Ten. The types and types of incest that you can commit. A textbook, if you want to know what were types. And as a result, in my country, the whites of South Africa, most of them are Christians. 8% of all whites in South Africa, they commit incest with their own daughters. And 13% of the Americans are committing incest. Did you, did you catch it, guys? 13% of the Americans commit incest. So he's now attacking <laughs> the West, guys. He's attacking the stories in the Bible. Ten, he's, he, he's talking about ten examples in the Holy Scripture, in the Holy Bible, that describes incest. Well, yeah, people back then in the Old Testament were sinners. I, I said it earlier, we are sinners. People sin. Yeah, you know, this guy free, you know, this guy is nothing but a coward. Last time he, he had no courage to call me. I will not call today. So if, maybe he, if he become courage today, maybe he can call me in the end of our teaching today, guys. So here, Ahmadi Dad is talking about the incest in our holy scripture. Let us see what this guy has to say more. Yeah, yeah. How many incest is happening in the Arabic world? How many incest is happening in the Islamic world? Right? In the madrasas. At least we are not hypocrites we do mention if there's something hence incest happening we mention it it's happening you know humans are sinners they do bad stuff it's the the, the flesh right we are inside a sinful flesh as if this guy doesn't sin you know how many teachers in the madrasas right the islamic schools how many times they touch young boys children but you know, Muslims will now tell you about it. So as if it's not happening in your Islamic world, Mr. Ahmadidat. You hypocrite, you munafiq. Let us continue. Let's be their own daughters. Clap, clap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Vernon Jones, a psychologist of great repute. He carried out experiments on groups of school children. Yeah, okay, okay. Guys, uh, so he loved to talk about the incest in the Bible. Okay, let's see what the Quran says about the incest, guys. Huh? Let us go to the Quran. This is chapter 25, Surah Al Furqan, chapter 25, ayah 54. Read with me, guys. We're going to show you the incest inside the Quran. 
And he, it is who had created man, Allah, who created man from water and had appointed for him kindred by blood and kindred by marriage. For thy Lord is ever powerful. Now, if you read it like this, you don't understand what is happening in this ayah. To understand this, we have to go to the tafsir, right? We have to go to the tafsir, right? Let us go to the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi, guys. We will go to the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi. This is the tafsir of Qurtubi. Unfortunately, guys, unfortunately, the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi, it's not translated into English. Well, I can't find it anywhere online. So you have to put trust in me today, guys. Okay? You have to put trust in me. So I'm going to read the Arabic for you. And I will try to translate. This is, I will give you the link also. You can put it on, uh, let's see. Let me give it to you in the live chat. You can put it also in maybe Google Translate. Just put the Google, uh, sorry, the link in Google Translate and it might translate the complete page. So you will have an idea what it says there. But I'm going to try to translate the Arabic text. I will read it and I will translate it. A couple of sentences for you. Qalu Taala, nasaban wa sihra, al nasab wal sihr, ma'anain yaman kull qirba takunu bina adamain, adamain. Right. So the translation is, Allah says, Allah said, one lineage and marriage, it is a meaning of happening between two people in lineage between two human beings right uh, the main between two human beings so uh, between a male and a female and qala ibn al-arabi qala ibn al-arabi al-nasab ibara an khalt bain al-dhakar wal-untha ala wajh al-shara so translation guys i'll translate the word nasab means lineage lineage it's a statement which means the mixing of water between the male and female according to sharia law this is what lineage means then he continues saying fa in kana bi masiya kana khalqan mutlaqan wa lam yakun nasaban muhaqqaqa translation guys Translation, and if it was against Sharia, meaning if it's adultery or fornication, so here, guys, pay attention, if it's against the Sharia, which means adultery or fornication, it is just a creation and not an absolute lineage. And then he says, lam tahta qawlihi. Translation, and this is what why it's not considered under... Uh, his statement, meaning Allah's statement. Hurrimat alaykum ummahatakum wa banatakum wa bintahu min al zina. Wa bintahu min al zina. Meaning, guys, if we translate this sentence, it means this is why it's not considered under his statement. It's forbidden for you, your mothers. And your daughters, his daughter from adultery, fornication, right? لِأَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ بِبِنْتٍ لَهُ فِي أَصَحَّ الْقَوْلَيْنِ لَعُلَمَاءَنَا وَأَصَحَّ الْقَوْلَيْنِ فِي الدِّينِ If we translate this, guys, it means the reason, according to Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir, the reason for this ayah, right, guys? The reason why, or because she's not considered forbidden for him, for who, for the male, to have sex with her because she is not considered his daughter. So according to the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi, guys, if you as a male, now pay attention, if you as a male fornicate or have adultery outside of legal sharia marriage, and you get a daughter from that fornication or adultery, you are allowed to have sex with your own daughter in Islam according to the Quran. This is not my tafsir, this is tafsir al Qurtubi. I gave you the link. According to this tafsir of the Quran, 
you are allowed as a male to have sex with your own daughter. So incest, guys, that Ahmadinejad loves to talk about is lawful according to the Quran if your daughter who is conceived from outside legal Sharia marriage. So incest is halal. So it's not forbidden for him to F his own daughter and the mother of his daughter. Conclusion, incest is halal according to Quran. So it's okay to F your own daughter because she is born from fornication or adultery, which means sexual intercourse between two people who are not legally married. Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it? So, Mr. Ahmadidad, why are you a hypocrite? Why are you a munafiq? Mr. Ahmadidad? Guys, uh, if you don't believe me, maybe my translation is bad, right? My translation is maybe, but maybe I'm lying. Maybe Rob Christian, maybe Rob Christian is lying. What about, what about our dear friend, Christian Prince? Let me play the video of Christian Prince, guys. Pay attention. How are you, Nightmare? Now he's debating that Nightmare guy. You remember Nightmare? Nightmare, how are you? How are you? How are you? Okay, you say you say in, in Islam, you man is allowed to get married with his own daughter. Yes, not married to 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 have sex with her. Just to have sex with her. Yes, oh, not really? to marry her. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Oh, really. Yeah, you want to huh? you want to challenge me? Yeah, but if you if you if you stay okay. with me, don't run away. Okay. Now, okay. if I if I show you the proof, what you would do? Show me the proof. No, no. I want you. I want you. I want you to. I want you to make a promise. I want you to make a presentation which you don't listen, understand. Listen. You, know? you, you are the one who called me, and you are the one who challenged me, and now I accept your challenge. But Look how CP is going to spank you. All, all this effort I would do. If I show you that your prophet and your religion and your Muslims and your Quran is is mm -hmm. a is a book of faith, and you're telling me to show you that, what you will do if I show you? I want from you a return, a promise. Are you going to say? Are you going to accept that whoever believe in this? I'm not going to. Let's see to if CP is going no. to agree with me, guys. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to say whoever believe in this garbage is a filthy, disgusting creature? Of course. Okay, thank you, guys. Of course, Mr. Nightmare, he said that. He made a promise. Let us go for the promise I made to prove. Oh, man, that was a bad decision, go. Mr. Nightmare. That was a really bad things. decision. Of course. Do you see the screen? Yes. All right. Same website, guys. Do you see? Same website that I used. قوله تعالى نسبا وصهرا النسب والصهر معنيان يا إماني كل قربة تكون بين آدميين translate please yeah guys guys no no you translate it this is Tafsir Al-Qurtubi guys Tafsir Al-Qurtubi one of the most respected guys no you translate if you make if you have something I don't agree then I can when Allah he said when Allah he said this is the interpretation when Allah he said نسبا وصهرا النسب والصهر معنيان يا عمان كل قربة تكون بين آدميين they are saying mm -hmm. Allah he said that lineage and marriage it is a meaning of anything having happened between two people in lineage between two human beings mm -hmm. قال ابن العربي ابن العربي he said النسب mm -hmm. عبارة عن خلط الماء بين الذكر والأنثى على وجه الشرع the word نسب mean lineage is it is a, a statement mean the mixing of the water between the male and the female according to the Sharia law. This is what lineage mean. And then he can mm -hmm. he continue saying, فَإِن كَانَ بِمَعْصِيَ كَانَ خَلْقًا مُطْلَقًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ نَسَبًا مُحَقَّقًا And if it mm -hmm. was against the Sharia, which mean adultery, it is just a creation and it is not an absolute lineage. And then he says, وَلِذَلِكَ لَمْ يَدُخُلْ تَحْتَ قَوْلِهِ and this is why is not considered under his command or his statement, which means Allah's statement. And this is why it is not considered under his statement. 
it's hmm. forbidden for you, your mothers and your daughter. And he continues saying, Bin to whom hmm. his daughter from adultery, Lianaha lay set be bintin lahu fi a sahil kolaini la ulama in a or sahil kolaini fi din. Because, and the reason she is not considered as forbidden for him, which means to sleep with her, because she is not considered as his daughter according to the most accurate scholars and the most accurate opinion of the religion. And if there is no relationship or lineage by Sharia law, so it is not forbidden for him. So it's not forbidden for him to do fornication with his daughter and the mother of his daughter. And what is forbidden from halal is not forbidden from what is haram. Now I get you busted, apologize, and say that you Muslims are disgusting creatures by believing in this as you promised me. Guys, did you catch it? You see? So we have two Arabic-speaking Christians in the form of Rob Christian and Christian Prince who just confirmed the incest that Allah allows in chapter 25, ayah 54. You see, you catch, you, did you catch it, guys? So I gave you the translation, and Mr. Christian Prince, who is a real dear brother of mine, confirmed it. And he spanked this Abdul called Nightmare. You know, I, I, I wonder what happened to Nightmare. He stopped calling in, guys. I hope he is still healthy. You know, he was an old guy, right? He was in his 50s, right? Moroccan Muslim. So, Mr. Ahmed Idad, Mr. Ahmed Idad loves to talk about incest of the Old Testament. You know, a lot of stuff happened in the Old Testament. Guys, remember the Old Testament... The Jews were under the Old Covenant, right? God gave more than 600 laws to the Jews, right? It's basically a law punishment system, right? Welcome, Tina. Welcome. God bless you. Hello. So, uh, in the Old Testament, guys, the Jews were under the Mosaic Law. They had the Ten Commandments, but they had also, besides the Ten Commandments, more than 600 plus laws. So it was a law and punishment. You do something bad, you get punished, right? You commit adultery, you will get stoned, right? That was the punishment for committing adultery in that time. So it was a law and punishment system. Then God, when Jesus came in the flesh, he brought the new covenant with whole mankind. The old covenant was with only with the Jews, with the Israelites, but the new covenant who jaw Jesus came, who gave us the new covenant, is with everyone, including the Muslims, the Christians, everybody, right? So we are not under the old covenant anymore, right? So yeah, we know that a lot of th things happened back then in the Old Testament. No one is perfect except God, right guys? We are all sinners. I mean, even King David, guys, King David sinned and he was punished by God, and he repented. Same happened with his son Solomon, King Solomon. He sinned big time, and he got punished for it, and he repented. We are humans. We are in the sinful flesh. This is why we need God. We can't help ourselves. This is why we needed God in the form of Jesus Christ, coming in the flesh as the eternal word of God. Remember John 1, 1, guys? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, in the, sorry, in the beginning was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. And John 1, 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right? We need Jesus. We are nothing without Jesus. Glory to His name. Amen. So Muslims, come, please. Muhammad cannot help you. Mr. Ahmed Idad cannot help you. This hypocrite. Right? Who loves to attack the Holy Bible. We don't deny that people in the Old Testament sinned big time. Even King David, even Solomon, even the prophets sinned. Right? Muhammad could not even help his parents. Both the parents of Muhammad, 
Abdullah, who Muslims claim to be the real father. We don't believe it's the real father. But anyway, Abdullah, according to Muhammad himself, is burning in hellfire, his father. And Amina, the mother of Muhammad, is burning in hellfire. And Muhammad even asked Allah to forgive her because they were mushrikeen, mushrikun. They were worshipping idols besides Allah. Right? And that's why they are still burning in hellfire because shirk is unforgivable sin in Islam. So Allah did not want to forgive the mother of Muhammad. So she is burning in hell fire for eternity. So, Mr. Ahmed Didat. Mr. Ahmed Didat. What is wrong with you, man? Why don't you look at your own mirror? Look inside the mirror. Take the nails out of your eyes first. When someone in the Old Testament sinned, he got punished because that's what the Mosaic law was all about. Right? Guys, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. So as you see guys, Mr. Ahmadidat, he was nothing but a hypocrite. Who loved to attack the Holy Bible. And he loved to go attack the Old Testament, right? So let us see what Ahmadidad has to say more. Let me go, let's see. Rape? Let's see what he has to say about rape. Then you read. Rape. Not only rape, how to rape your own sister if you want to, it's given to you in detail. If you want to rape your own sister. One of the sons of David, he set you an example. What what you must do if you want to rape your own sister? Yeah, gang yeah. rape is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, gang rape. Son yeah. goes and prohibits ten of his father's wives. Ten in a row. Yeah, yeah we know, we know, I'm we know. Oh, it's okay. In the Holy Book. We are sinners. A Christian lady here in the UK. Here this is why we need God, right? She wrote a letter. She says, ban the book. I see punishment of innocence. And Moses said to them, Have you kept all the women alive? You remember the story, guys? All the women, you have kept them alive. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones. Every male child among the little ones of the Palestinians kill them. First of all, it's not Palestinian, it's Philistinian, right? The, the Philistines, right? The Philistines. So here he made a mistake. Right? He slipped. If you go to the Quran, guys, the same story is in the Quran. Mr. Ahmed Idad, why are you a hypocrite? Mr. Free Cute, why is your hero, Mr. Ahmed Idad, such a hypocrite? The same story that he is attacking is in the Quran. Chapter 5, Ayah 21. O oh my people, who are those? The Israelites. Enter the Holy Land. So Allah is saying to the Israelites, enter the Holy Land. Right? Which Allah has assigned for you. And do not turn back, let you turn, lest you turn as losers. So according to Allah, He is commanding the Israelite, the Bani Israel, to enter the promised land, which is Jerusalem, right? And to stay there. If you leave, you turn back, you leave, you will become losers. So here Allah is the biggest Zionist. Did you catch it? Allah is the Zionist. Muslims love to call people Zionists. But here Allah is the one who is giving the promised land, so Mr. Free, free Cute, you're a hypocrite like your hero, Mr. Ahmed Idad. Clearly, Mr. Ahmed Idad has no clue about his own Quran. The same story is in the Quran, chapter 5, ayah 21. Let us continue. They said, O oh Moses, there are tyner, tyrannical people in it. We will not enter it until they leave it. If they leave it, we will be entering. Let me continue. Two men of those who feared, but whom Allah had blessed said, go at them by the gate. And when you have entered, you will prevail. So he's, this is still uh, talking about the Bani Israel, the Israelites. And put your trust in Allah if you are believers. This is in the time of Moses, right guys? Those people are Israelites. They said, O oh Moses, we will not enter it ever as long as they are in it. So go ahead, you and your Lord, and fight. We are staying right here. Then it continues, said, My Lord, 
I have control only over myself and my brothers to separate between us and between the uh, wicked people. And then it continues in Ayah number 26. He said, it's forbidden for them for 40 years. Remember the story? This is from the Bible. Didn't uh, Ahmadi Dad say, what is worthy to copy from it? Well, here Muhammad is copying from the Holy Bible. You hypocrite. You Satan worshipper, Mr. Ahmadi Dad. You munafiq. This is nothing but a copy paste by Muhammad from the Old Testament. Did you catch it, guys? What a hypocrite, no? Nice hypocrite. <laughs> Mr. Ahmadidat, you are attacking a story from Numbers, right? Well, it's in your Quran. They have to go and fight the Philistines. Right? It's the same stories in your Quran. What's wrong with this guy? What did he smoke that morning, man? What did, what did this guy smoke? Anyway, let's just continue. And every kill every woman. Who yeah, yeah. In That's in your Quran, man. If any woman has ever had sex with a man, kill them also. But keep a life for yourselves. All the young girls, not the little ones. Yeah, that's what Allah is saying, right? Allah is saying that. them and bring them up. No time for that. It's in chapter 5, Abdul. But keep alive for yourselves the, all the young girls, the Palestinian young girls, who have not known a man intimately. This is the instruction given to... Yeah, this is the instruction of Allah to the Ben Israel. Yeah, as we, as we read in chapter 5. Girl, how can you verify whether this woman has experienced sex or not? How do you verify? The soldier in the field... He doesn't know about the saliva test. He doesn't know anything about it. The only way is to rape and ravish these Palestinian girls. Uh, what about chapter 4 to ayah 24? Ma malakat aymanakum. What your right hand possesses, Abdul. It's your Quran, in your Quran. What's wrong with you? We read it before, right? Take the captive slaves, girls. Sex slaves. Right? And we mentioned the prostitution also in the same ayah. So what the, the thing that he's talking about, it's right here. Take sex slaves. What you're right, you are allowed to have sex slaves. You hypocrite. <laughs> Palestinian, yeah. It's, you know, he's, he, he has no clue about history, guys. It's the Philistines, Abdul. Nothing called Palestinian girls. Philistinian. The Kenites, right? If I'm not mistaken. The Philistines, not the Palestines. There was nothing called Palestine. You ignorant Abdul. Is this your hero? Muslims, Muslims, is this your hero? Palestinian girls? <laughs> Abdul, the Philistines are not the Palestinians. Totally different people. The Philistines do not exist anymore. They, were, they are wiped out. So he is confusing, guys, he's confusing the Palestinians of today with the Philistines of the Old Testament. Those people are wiped out. They don't exist anymore, actually. Right? Lord of mercy. This is your hero, Muslims? Is this, your, is this guy your hero? Lord of mercy. To verify whether a man has been through her or not. And if they discover that she has already been used second hand, chop off her head. If not, keep them. And they saved for themselves. It's in your Quran, Abdul. Thousand Palestinian girls. Philistinian so girls, Philistinian, girls. not Palestinian. After raping and ravishing them, they saved for themselves 32,000 for The Philistines. Themselves. And out of that, the Lord Almighty, God Almighty, must also have his pound of flesh. So it says, and 30 and 2 was for Yeah, the yeah, Lord. okay. We already spanked him about this. Let's see. God talking this filth and dirt, kill every. Yeah. It says here, therefore, David arose and went. He and his men, Dawud alayhi salam, David. Okay, same story. So says, Let's see. This is supposed to be in the word of God. Now, under the test that is given to us by Dr. Sharosh, where does it fit in? Does it, is that your doctrine? I'm looking the for a part, guys, just a second. With this critical eye. 
Okay, now guys, you now pay attention. Chapter 38. Now he's going to talk about Judah, guys, from Genesis 38. Pay attention, guys, and I'm going to explain and spank this guy, okay? He's, he's going to attack Judah, uh, who is basically... Uh, uh, Jesus comes from the line of Judah, right? Jesus comes from the line of Judah, not from Joseph, right? If you go to the lineage, if you go to the family tree of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, glory to his name, he comes from the line of Judah, right? Remember, there were 12 tribes, right? 12 tribes, and one, one of them is Judah. Now he's going to attack Judah, watch. You read about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. He has three sons, and he gets the eldest son married, and he does something that God didn't like, so God killed him. Genesis chapter 38. Ask the Christian, where does it fit in? He says, reproof, which is correct. God told him not to do certain things and he did it, so God killed him. So now Judah tells his second son, Onan, you go in unto your brother's wife, according to a Jewish custom, and beget a child by her, so that the name of the deceased might carry on. This guy, Onan, he goes unto his brother's wife, trying to fulfill his duty, but at the critical moment, the jealousy enters his heart. He says, look, the seed is mine, but the name will be my brother's. So he spills it on the ground. I'm reading the Bible. He spilled it on yeah, the yeah, ground. Okay. So there were sinners. Like what's up? Yeah. Sinners like a prophet. What's, what's wrong with that? So look, People sin. This is your we know, You're Abdul. We know. Do certain duty, you perform. As if you don't you sin every day. God kills you also. Now the old man sends his daughter-in-law. Yeah, yeah, clap, guys. Clap. People the are sinners. Clap, clap. His daughter-in-law back to her father's house, telling her that the next time the third fellow is grown up, I will call you. But conveniently, he forgets. Conveniently. So the woman wants to take revenge. So she gets the news that her father-in-law is going to Timnat. I'm reading the book of Genesis, chapter 38. He's going to Timnat to share his sheep. So she goes and sits by the, way, by the wayside and covers her face. The old man passing by, he sees this woman and he's game. He's game. So he comes to her and reading the Holy Bible. He says, allow me to come in unto thee. What Samson did to in Gaza, same thing, let me do to you. Okay, let me stop the video, you guys. If you pay attention, guys, please, guys, help me to help you. Pay attention to what he's saying. So he's talking about the story of Judah, guys. The story of Judah in Genesis 38. We know the story of Judah very well, guys. Help me to help you. So please pay attention. Uh, I'm going to explain to you what's basically happening, okay? Judah's story is a well-known story in the Old Testament, right? He was definitely, like I said, not perfect. Who is only perfect? Jesus is perfect. Even Judah sinned. Like I said, King, King David sinned. So he was definitely not perfect. He was a sinner like all of us. And the Old Testament speaks of many stories like this, i.e. King David, how he sinned and he got punished and then repented. David's sin was punished and repented. So Judah sold his little brother Joseph into slavery, right? He also lied to his father about selling his little brother Joseph. Then he left his family and had a son. That son was so evil that God zapped him off the face of the earth, like Mr. Ahmed had mentioned, right? And if we continue, you, see, you heard him talking, attacking Judah, who is the father of the tribe of Judah, right? So Judah gave his dead son's wife Tamar, Tamar to his other son. The other son was also evil, and so God killed him too, right? Remember, the Jews are under, are under the Mosaic law. Laws, you don't obey a law, you get punished by God. That's how, that was how the Old Covenant worked, right? They are under the Old Covenant, remember. And later, Jesus fulfilled the Old Covenant and brought us the New Covenant with whole mankind. The Old Covenant was with the Jews. The New Covenant that Jesus fulfilled is with whole mankind. So then Judah refused to give Tamar to his third son, blaming her for the death of the first two. Later, guys, pay attention, later, he has sex with her himself. So Judah has sex with his own daughter-in-law, right? So she hid 
her own identities. This the story goes like this in the Old Testament. She is posing to be a prostitute, and in lieu of payment, he gives her her staff, cord, and signet ring. So Judah, right? Judah is a sinner, and he wanted to have sexual intercourse, and he thought that his daughter-in-law was a prostitute, right? So basically gave her, uh, let's say, like today, his ID card, credit card, and social security number, right? That was what a uh, staff was basically, a cord and a signet ring back in, the, in those days. So she gets pregnant from Judah, right? She gets pregnant and calls him out for being a terrible person. And he owns it up to it, right? So he says, yeah, I'm a bad guy. So he didn't say, yeah, you're the... No, no. When he finds out that she, he had sexual intercourse with his own daughter-in-law, he, uh, he didn't say, no, she's wrong. He said, no, I'm the wrong guy. And he repented, right? So he has a turnaround in character, later for volunteering to take his brother's place as a prisoner. Remember on, uh, you know, the story with uh, Benjamin, right? And when they went to, uh, to Joseph, right? Remember that story in the Old Testament? So Tamar has two sons by Judah. She becomes pregnant and she gets two sons by Judah. And it's through her son Paris that Jesus is born. So uh, from the lineage of Judah, Jesus is born. Eventually after a long line. Now, why Judah? Now, you know, if you are... Ask yourself this question. Why did God decide that Jesus should come from the line of Judah? While Judah is such a big sinner, right guys? Right? Judah is a big sinner, right guys? Thank you for your donations, guys. God bless you. Thank you for your donations. We appreciate it. So here, Judah, guys, Judah is an ex said to be an example, right? So here, why did, if we ask ourselves, why did God choose to come from the lineage to Judah all the way to Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ, right? So why, why Judah? Why not Joseph, guys? Why not Joseph, his brother, who became uh, basically a, a king, right? A pharaoh, according to, all, to the Old Testament story. So Judah was the second favorite. Well, third after Benjamin, but he's not important right now. So, and the fourth oldest, he, his three older brothers fell out of favor with God through murder as we said, sexual misconduct, leaving Judah the heir, right? So Judah's father blessed him more than any other son, right? But Joseph already had a kingdom, like I mentioned earlier, sort of, right? So he was in charge of Egypt, remember? He was in charge of Egypt. He was basically a... Uh, he, he had a kingdom, basically. He, was, he became really powerful, as the story... Uh, so that leaves Judah. His story and the full point turnaround he made in it, right, was used by God to save us all through Jesus Christ. God definitely could have made Jesus Joseph's heir, right? He could have done it. But look, look the, how the plan of God, you know, we always say God uh, works in mysterious ways, right? We can't fully comprehend why God chose to come through the line of Judah. No problem. But it's too much more impactful if he's Judah's heir, right? So who would be surprised if the heir of the righteous man who did everything right, i.e. Joseph, turned out to be the Messiah? No one. That isn't meaningful, right? So Joseph was already a paragon of virtue. But Judah? What about Judah? Judah, like I said, did terrible things. He was a bad sinner like you and me. Like King David, like Solomon, right? So no one would accept him to be the forefather of Jesus. But he was redeemed and turned his life around like King David. He repented, he was punished, he repented. And we all have the option and ability to do the same through Jesus. That is what Judah's story says. And that is why we believe God chose Judah over Joseph, the favorite. Did you catch it, guys? 
So, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Ahmed Idad, you are not teaching us anything new. Right? And you are basically showing us how merciful our holy living God of the Old Testament is. Right? He could have chosen the righteous Joseph, but he chose for Judah because this is a good example, right? The mercy of God. So, Mr. Ahmadida, you're not telling us anything new. We already know this, right? And the filth that you love to talk about is in your Quran, incest as we mentioned earlier, chapter 25, ayah 54, we showed you the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi, that it's legal to have sex with your own daughter, have sexual intercourse, incest, if that daughter that is your own daughter is conceived from fornication, from adultery. So Mr. Ahmadidat, you want to have a cake and eat it too? Huh? <laughs> so as you see guys Mr. Ahmadidat he loves to talk about chapter sorry about numbers but the same story is in chapter 5 Allah commanding the Israelites the Bani Israel to go and attack take captives kill people right but God of the Old Testament he judged bad people through the Jews, right? He judged them. God is a judge. He does not allow sins to go unpunished. And like I said, the Jews, also the Jews were under the law system, the Mosaic law system, right? You do something bad, you get punished. You commit adultery, you get stoned, right? Even if Muhammad, guys, pay attention, according to Deuteronomy 18, 20, if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses himself, the Moses himself, would have ordered his men to go and stone Muhammad to death. Why? Because Muhammad, who claims to be a prophet, came with a totally different God, Allah. Who is Allah? The Israelites in the time of Moses never heard of Allah. So if Muhammad claimed to be a prophet, he would have been ordered to be killed by stoning outside of the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, let me play a video for you guys from Ahmadi Dad also. Pay attention, guys. This is uh, I'm going to end it with a bang. Take notes. Take notes. This is one of the videos that I created, guys. But I need, really need to show you this part because I like you to take notes. Use it, help me to help you guys to expose false teachers like this fake, false deceiver teacher, Ahmadidad. Of miracles. Listen. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Abdul, there is no such thing called the Holy Quran. The Quran in Islam is unholy. Yes, you heard it correctly. The Quran in Arabic is called Al-Quran Al-Kareem, the noble Quran. Let me pray for you a video from a Sunni Sheikh who will rebuke and destroy Ahmadidat when Ahmadidat said the Quran is holy. No, there is no such thing called holy prophet or holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al Quran al Muqaddas? Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there is no such thing as holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. In Christianity, you have holy Father, holy Son. Holy Ghost, Holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have Holy Prophet, Holy Quran, and Holy other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing called 
holy Quran. There is no such thing called holy prophet. So Mr. Ahmadidad, you're a liar and a deceiver. You're a liar and a deceiver. A verse from the Holy Quran. A verse from the Holy Quran. A verse from the Holy Quran. You see, guys, I, uh, this makes my job really easy. If the Quran is unholy, you heard it, right? If the Quran is not holy, it means it's unholy. If the Quran is not holy, Muslims, did you pay attention? If there's nothing called holy in Islam, according to the Sheikh, who spanked Ahmadidat for me, that means Islam is unholy, the Quran is unholy, the prophet of Islam is unholy. That means Islam is nothing but a satanic unholy cult. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that I will end it with a bang, guys? And by this we concluded today's teaching. I hope you enjoyed the refuting, the spanking of Mr. Ahmadida. I hope you uh, took notes, guys, during this teaching. I, no, it's not really. It, it was hardly a teaching. It was more kind of uh, spanking. But yeah, I hope uh, the Muslims who was were courage enough to watch the whole video of today, the whole live show. I hope they took notes and they also watched how Mr. Ahmadi went down under. Thank you. God bless you, Slada and others. Thank you. Appreciate. It. God bless you and God bless your families. So by this, guys, we conclude, we finish our today's teaching. I hope we have Muslims. Guys, my Skype is open. Muslims, if there are Muslims who think, who have the knowledge and the courage, please call me. You are now able to call me. So don't say, Rob Christian, you know, he never opened up his Skype. My Skype is open. Call me. Finish me. End my career, please. Right? Maybe we can have a nice discussion. Come on, Muslims. Free cute. Call me, call me. Yeah, Abdul. Yeah, Kazab even Kazab. Call me, call me. You hypocrite. Call me. Yalla. Farjini Ardak Tafik. Show me your courage, man. If you are. Hiding? You're hiding now, eh? Oh, uh, you're crying? Oh, free cute, you're crying. Oh, I hope we didn't hurt your feelings. Eh? Because we spanked Mr. Ahmed Dad, your hero, really pretty badly today, right? I hope you enjoyed the spanking. Are there uh, also Christian brothers and sisters? If you have questions in the text, please fire away. We are here. To answer your questions too. You know. Suddenly guys. The Muslims. Became all keyboard jihadis. I think guys. We should create a time travel machine. And we should. Buy some keyboards. Go back in time. Go back in the time of Muhammad and the companions. And, and take. Ask them to remove the swords. And give them keyboards. Right. Right. Give them QWERTY keyboards. Right? Because, you know, Muslims of today became very soft. Oh, we have the truth. We have, uh, what's his name? Ultimate Truth. Let me accept the call. Guys. Hey, Ultimate Truth. Long time no see. What's up, man? What do you want to know? I hope you're going to defend Islam this time. Because you always, like Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you always <coughs> attack the Bible. Defend, defend your, uh, your hero, Mr. Ahmadi Dad. Come on. What? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Come on. Can you defend Mr. Ahmed Uh What is the what is the what, what is the big deal of him saying holy Quran and he, this guy saying not? You know what? So wait, 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 wait. Here's the big deal. Here's the big deal. Here's the big deal. Listen carefully, okay? Good. Hello? There is no such thing, Holy Quran. You hear the Sheikh? 
Muqaddas. There is nothing called. There is nothing called Muqaddas. So you are you are a hypocrite. You are a liar, like Mr. Ahmed Ida. There is nothing called. There's this, this Shuni Sheikh is in front of you. He is. He knows Islam better. Wait, 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 my friend, mate. You just you just got spanked like Mr. Ahmed Ida. You just said there's nothing wrong with calling the Quran holy. No, according to the Shuni Sheikh, who a who is a public respectful respected sheikh he's saying there's nothing called holy quran it's called quran al kareem there's nothing called holy quran why are you using our own concept our christian concept we call the bible holy bible why are you trying to copy the jews and the christians rob uh, yeah I, I, uh, I did not uh, tell you yeah. i did not tell you if i was saying holy or not holy Yes, you, no, 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 no. You are recording, my friend. You said, said you said what's wrong. You said you said what's wrong. You said what's I wrong with the calling the Quran holy. Everyone heard you. Don't lie. Yeah, the, the, that's what I said. I said, what is the big deal you making out of one one Muslim saying holy? Because what you are a liar. If you call the Quran holy, Quran, you are a liar. That's the big. It's a big deal. It's very. Big I didn't deal. Say, listen. All I said is. You so you're an mon are you a monafik, Mister 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 Ultimate Truth? Listen. Listen. Why, oh, listen, listen, listen. Are you, are you, are you a munafiq? No, but why are you, are you scared of me? Why do you, yeah, why I'm, do I'm, I'm shivering. Stop? I'm shivering. I'm very scared. Everyone is seeing. Everyone okay, now, is my witness. Please. I'm shivering from you. Okay. I'm scared. Okay. Oh, Rob. Why, why are you munafiq, my friend? Why are you calling? Why are you agreeing with Mr. Ahmed You heard the sheikh. You heard the sheikh. You were listening. You are listening. The, the audience in the chat were listening. There is nothing called Holy Quran. Al Muqaddas is a Christian concept. Why are you copying us? Why are you being a hypocrite, Abdul? So, so if one Muslim make the mistake and call it Holy Quran, so you made a mistake. Can you, can you, can you open up the cam and say in front of every show your face? Say I made a mistake, like Mr. Ahmed. Can you do that, please, for us? I made a mistake. Me? Did I? Did I? Uh, yeah, did you. I call Yes, you said you agreed with Ahmadida. You said what's wrong I with calling the Quran said, Holy Quran? Is, this is recorded. I said, what is the big deal? Yeah, so you're agreeing with Two Ahmadida, people, right? One thing. No, I'm agreeing with nobody. I'm telling you, you are making a big deal out when of you nothing. Say, when you say there's no big deal, so clearly you're agreeing. Why are you lying? Even if one Muslim, uh, let me, let me, let me tell you more. There's a guy called uh, his name. Okay, uh, wait, wait. Uh, okay, okay, wait. Before you go, can Hold you on. tell? Can you say to to the, our audience, our lovely audience who are listening now, right now, to you and me, can you say to everyone, Mr. Ahmed Idad was a liar and a munafiq for saying holy Quran? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Why uh, not? Why? First, he's dead. First, first of all, he's dead. Uh, well, you well, give I mean, can can dead people not lie? Can that can dead people not lie and be deceivers like Mr. Ahmed Idad? Hold on, please give respect to dead people, please, please, please. What? No, no matter what happened, they're dead. Please give them respect. Yeah, but please. see, what did he lie when he said the Holy Quran? Did he lie? No, please, please. Let's talk about. Be no, be honest. Now be honest. Once in your life, do you yeah. agree with Mr. Ahmed Idad no calling the Quran Jesus, Holy Quran? Jesus, he is asking you to respect dead people, bro. But you here you insulting what, them. You are wasting my time. Either you're going to be honest once I in your life. Gonna, Don't waste my time. Do Did you call me to waste my time? No, I, I got a question for you. No, no, no. You answer my question, then we, we move on. Are you going to, you are you going to apologize you. for the sake of... Gonna, are you going to apologize for saying there's nothing wrong with the Holy Quran? I was going to tell you worse than that. Because... No, no, because the Sheikh... Everyone was hear, hearing the Sheikh. There is nothing called holy in Islam. There's, there's nothing called holy prophet. There's Jehu. nothing called there's nothing called holy Quran. This is Sheikh. He's more he's more respected than you. Who are you, man? Who are you? Uh, what, why do you call yourself ultimate truth? Who are you? Are nobody. Why do you call yourself the truth? Al Haq is the one of the ninety nine names of Allah. Why do you call yourself Al Haq, my, my friend? Isn't that shirk? No. Why do you call yourself the truth, Al Haq? Why? Why? Isn't that shirk? You are associating yourself with but Allah. So you are committing shirk, my friend, when you call yourself the truth. And not only the truth, the ultimate truth. Nice yes. for the shirk, my friend. I applaud you for your <laughs> shirk name. Can I tell I, you how? If you are a true Muslim, 
I advise you to change your name after the call. Okay, okay can I talk now, Rob? No, are you going to agree or disagree with Ahmed Hidad? Please be a man. No. All Please I'm be a man. You. Be a man, be a man, be a man. Okay. okay, let me give you my point of view. That's okay. it. Okay, go, go ahead. Muslims, you see, are more, there is more than that in Islam. You, you, you know, there are Shia, there are Sunnis, there is so many things. Those, those are bigger deals. This is not a big deal. You're making a big deal. This is a very big deal. What are you talking about? No. The Sheikh is, is than, very serious. Than, there is than, nothing than, called holy in Islam. Hold on, hold on. Is this worse than being Shias and Sunnis? Or yes, being a, yes, a, yes. Or being Unitarians and then... Yes, and then, uh, it's uh, very big Trinitarian. deal. Is the Quran a small deal? Wait, wait. Is the Quran a small deal? When you, call, well, you, when you give the Quran yes. a bad false name, is it a big deal or not? When I call the Quran Satanic Quran, is it a big deal? Rob, you are please. So it's a very That's big deal. The sheikh is serious. Look how serious. Look, look at the beard of the sheikh and how he looks, man. I mean, if I b become older, guys, I want to grow I? like this, like this beard of this guy. Look how beautiful his beard is. is. All I'm telling you is, one of them make a mistake. It's not a big deal, you know. That's it. So you agree? So you agree? There's nothing called holy in Quran, right? Or in Islam, yeah. there's nothing called holy, right? I agree. I agree. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Guys, thank I applaud you for, for being a so guys, you hear them? He disagrees with Ahmadidat calling the Quran holy. So we have Rob. so we have a guy who calls himself the ultimate truth, who is finally once in his life he's honest and he disagrees with one of the biggest heroes in Islam, the liar and deceiver, Mr. Ahmadidat. Go ahead. Okay. Ahmadinejad was that was just a human being. He was not a. He was not a. Messenger. So he was. A, he was yeah, but he was a deceiver, right? Because no, he called no, the Quran no. holy Quran. No, he exposed Christianity to the core, to the bone. You wish. You, know? you wish. You wish. We are spanking him. We spanked him left and right. He he had no legs to stand on. Been gone for 14, 15 years. You are still debating him? I mean, he stopped. We are no, no. We, this is not a debate. This is spanking, my friend. This is not a After, debate. After you know after what? 20, you know, you know what? Years. You know what? You're wasting my time. You're wasting. You know, guys, uh, this guy, you know, waste of time. Nothing new. I advise this guy to go and change his name. His name is Shirk, man. It's not even. It's hardly called a debate, man. Look, look how we are spanking him left and right. I'm a nobody. I mean, I'm Rob Christian. I'm a nobody, and I'm spanking the Islamic hero. A nobody spanking Ahmadidad live on air and everyone is my witness where well, I was spanking him how long are we alive guys I am spanking him left and right I'm exposing his hypocrisy left and right he's talking about incest and we are showing him the incest in the Quran he is attacking the chapter of numbers from the Old Testament we are showing him the same chapter in the Quran. Same story in the Quran. This is your hero? Change your name, Mr. Ultimate Truth. Change your name. You are using the name of Allah. That's shirk, my friend. Allah's name, guys, one of the 99 names is Al-Haq, which means the truth. So this guy is associating himself with Allah, which is shirk, which is the unforgivable sin in Islam. So it seems that Allah will not forgive you for using the ultimate truth, my friend. But anyway, just leave Islam, my friend. It's best for you. Leave Islam. Islam is nothing but an unholy. You heard it, right? Unholy. If the Quran is not holy, it means it's unholy. Thank you. The Sheikh is in front of you. He said it. A Here. thing called holy prophet or holy Quran. Let me play the video. For you. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says Al-Quran al muqaddas? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Quran is unholy. It's not al muqaddas. Guys, al muqaddas means holy. When we Christians, the Arabic speak Christian, when we like to call the Bible in our language in Arabic. We call it Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, the holy book. Bible means book, right? So the holy book, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas. So when Muslims like Mr. Ahmadidad 
the deceiver and lion and hypocrite. He called the Quran holy. He's copying the Jews and the Christians. The last time we checked, Muhammad himself said, don't copy the Jews, don't copy the Christians. Right? And uh, the proof is in front. Look. Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. <laughs> we don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. <laughs> in Christianity, you have holy father, yeah, we, holy son, true. holy ghost, holy, holy God, holy God. But in Glory Islam, to his name. we don't have holy prophet, holy Quran, and holy other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing <laughs> called Holy Quran. There is no such thing called Holy Prophet. So Mr. Ahmadidad, you're a liar and a deceiver. Unholy Prophet, unholy a Quran. Deceiver. <laughs> Be a verse from the Holy Quran. Be a verse from the Holy Quran. Be a verse from the Holy Quran. Oh man. Mr. Ahmadidad. Mr. Ahmadidad, I really hope this guy before, you know, he, you know, I don't like to talk about, but when he was on his deathbed, I, I really hope that he repented and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. I really uh, do hope so. Because, you know, guys, we always say, Muslims are nothing but victims of this Arabic satanic cult, which is an unholy cult, satanic cult. They have the unholy Quran. You heard the Sheikh, right? Unholy Prophet. Unholy Quran. There is nothing called Holy Quran in Islam. There is nothing called Holy Prophet in Islam. So Mr. Ahmad Didad. Sorry to say Muslims, but your hero, your hero, your Islamic knight has been spanked and served once again, yet again. You know, and remember, guys, Ahmed Idad, he challenged God. He said, If I am a liar, may God silence me. And what happened to him? He, this guy, got silenced in the end. He really died a horrible death. I really hope that he repented on his deathbed. Be warned, Muslims. Your Islamic. Si Hero was silenced. When you challenge God, you'll get silenced. We are not going to say, you know, we're not going to say and attack people who get diseases, right? I mean, even the best Christians, even the most righteous Christians can get an illness, right? But this guy was a debater. He was the hero, right? Right. Only God knows, right, Frau? Yeah. God bless you too, Radical Love. God bless you. God bless everyone in the live chat. Guys, are there any questions? Are there any questions from our Christian brothers and sisters? Rene, is, are you still there? Rene, I didn't hear your voice for a long time. You want to call me? On Skype, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. If uh, Renee, Renee, yeah, call me, sister. I really missed your voice. Call me. Let's have a nice chat before we close today's live broadcasting. Before we end this session, I want to know what you thought about today's. Let's see if our dear sister Renee can call us so we can have a small discussion. My Skype ID, Renee, is the Rob Christian. Alright. Alright. Hello, dear sister. How are you? Hey, Rob. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How are you? I'm not not too bad. I just uh, my break for school is over, so unfortunately, school starts for me on Monday. But that is life. I hope your family is doing well. I haven't talked to you in a long time. You haven't, don't call. You don't go on pal talk anymore. You're no. too big for us, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm 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 really uh, you know I'm just doing my thing you know pal talk 
uh, I left it behind, you know, then I was asked to come on Discord and I started doing videos and I thought let's also start doing live shows and you know, so we are here where we stand right now, right? So what do you think, what do you think about what happened with our conversation with uh, uh, our friend, <laughs> Muslim friend, Ultimate Truth? What about today's teaching? What do you think about it? Um, what was the the gentleman's name? Um, Ultimate the, Truth. The sheikh. The Ult sheikh that, that oh, he had. Oh, the sheikh. The sheikh. Oh, I don't know. I have no clue what his name is. He he's famous on uh, David Wood's channel for saying very funny things, which I appreciate him. He's very honest, you know. Yeah. I I really enjoy his videos because you know when he said there's no there's no holy Quran, there's no holy Muhammad. You know that's that's interesting because so David David, David Wood realize. also showed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shows. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's Anthony. Anthony Rogers actually. He has videos. Okay. Wow. And he uh, he also said something really funny too. That um, telling Muslims not to lie about Islam, about jihad, that it exists in Islam, and it's a fighting ayah. And <laughs> you you, you got to put that on your show too. It's it's really good. Like he's got a lot of material <laughs> for us to to post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what what do you think about uh, today's teaching and? Uh, the conversation that I just heard earlier. With, um, what's his name? Ultimate Truth, the guy who uses the name of Allah, right? Al-Haq. Al-Haq. <laughs> you know, to be honest, I didn't hear it too much. I kind of came in late on that. The Was it the the guy that just called? Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, I, I blacked that conversation out. I'm sorry, Ultimate Truth. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking with Fadi in the text, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't hear him. Yeah, he was yelling a lot, so I didn't really. I kind of tuned him out a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's okay. What was he? What was he saying? Well, he, he first first thing he said he asked he said, "What's wrong with calling the Quran holy?" And then I I said ah. to him, "Didn't you hear what the Sheikh was saying? There's nothing called holy Quran." Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So my my question for him is like, is he saying he's wrong? Does he believe that the Quran is holy or what? Yeah, he said there's nothing say. wrong. He said, what's wrong with calling the Quran holy? So clearly this ultimate it's truth. It's not Quranic. <laughs> yeah, it's not Quranic. <laughs> it's not Islam. I mean, yeah. I, I even plead the Sheikh's voice again for him, right? And in yeah. the end, if you, so clearly you just said you didn't hear him. But in the end, I made him say it. Everyone is my witness. I made him say it. Okay, I'm wrong. You see, everyone, heard, it's recorded, right? So he admitted in the end that yes, the Quran is unholy, right? There's nothing uh, called the holy Quran. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Well, oops. Exactly. Story of my life. Story of my life. What can we do? So then, what is the point in following an unholy book? Yeah. I mean, well, the Sheikh admitted that you know we have the Holy Bible. It is indeed holy because it yeah, comes from God. It's holy. That's the one million dollar question that we are <laughs> asking ourselves. And we don't get an answer, you know. Why, why are you following an unholy book? I mean, if it's unholy, it's not holy. That means it's unholy, right? Exactly. The other way, if something is not holy, that means it's unholy. Unholy means not from God. It's from Satan. If it's not from God, it must be from Satan. So Muslims, why are you following an unholy Quran? That's the one million dollar question, right? And you know, it's weird that... Um that it never actually calls itself a holy text because yeah. you know that's that's something that it should call itself if it truly is the word from god mm, and we uh, never see such claim mm, are you telling me that's a sign <laughs> <laughs> yes it should be your your yeah. your alarm should be going off in your head right ding, now ding, so ding, you ding, should ding, be ding. asking yourself why doesn't it say that yeah like this ding 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 ding, ding. yes <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but I think it's awesome what you're doing here on YouTube now, Rob. I think you have a bigger audience, bigger fish to fry than on Pal Talk. You know, Pal Talk kind of went stale. So mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. More people are viewing. I mean, we got 68 people watching now. That's more than the room we get in Pal Talk. So I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you, you've got 4,000 followers. That's crazy. Uh -huh. Everyone you know, like the, and the, subscribe. Yeah, the Lord has been good, you know. Uh, I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate people who donate, you know. Uh, you know, thank you for your donation. Thank you for your support. And guys, we don't do this for ourselves. We do this for the truth. And only the truth mm -hmm. will set you free. Muslims, please, 
if there are any Muslims, today is another day that we showed you, that we showed you that Ahmadidad is nothing but a liar and deceiver. He's nothing but a hypocrite. If your heroes can be spanked and served for everyone to see, please leave this unholy satanical. Come back to Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. Ahmadidad, during this teaching, guys, Ahmadidad, and Renee, maybe you was uh, listening. Ahmadidad was not telling us anything new. He was showing us that people like Samson, people like Judah, people, people like King David, people like King Solomon, they were all sinners. And they got punished and they repented. Perfect clear example why we need Jesus. Jesus is the only sinless person who is the eternal word of God who came into the flesh to save us. Why? Because we are sinners and he was not. He was sinless. This is why only God is sinless. This is why only God can come and save us because we are not worthy enough to save ourselves. We need God to be reunited again with God so we can be in his kingdom. Glory to his name, Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Yurine, yeah. you want to have say something before we close this conversation? Sister, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. You want to say something? Or you want to say something to the crowd? Yeah, I just want to keep encouraging the, the ones that are in the bushes, the ones that are listening, that may not be in the text, to keep coming back because there's a reason they're being led, like free cutes. There's a reason why he keeps hanging around Christian chats. They're being led here, so I hope they continue to listen and they, they keep continuing to learn, and in the end, it shall glorify Christ. The truth shall prevail. Shall prevail excuse me. Amen. Thank you for having me on, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man, and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you for calling, dear sister. God bless you. No God problem. bless your family. And God bless you, too. Thank you for being an admin, and also the other admins. Thank you very much, and hopefully we can speak once more in the near future. God bless you, yeah, sister. Yeah, no problem. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. So guys, I hope we can answer one or two questions from the live chat and then we will close today's live session. Are there any questions? Like I said, I want to thank our audience, our people who are supporting us, who are doing donations, our admins, our beloved admins who are doing a wonderful job on my live show in the live chat or Christian Prince. I mean, we also played Christian Prince to, uh, video two guys, you heard it right, who confirmed what I was saying in the translation of the Quran, right? The tafsir of the translation of the Quran, to be specific for chapter 25, ayah 54, where incest is halal, incest with your own daughter that you is conceived from fornication. Allah made it halal to have incest with your own daughter, right? Any Muslim, do we, do we have still any Muslim who think, who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? I think we are out of Muslims, guys. We are out of Muslims, again, story of my life, story of my life. Any questions in the chat? Sorry if I missed your questions, guys, during this teaching or the conversation. Any questions? Fadi Harun uh, is asking, should Christians use the name of Allah as the name of triune God? Some Christian Arabs before Muhammad did so. I think Allah's name is damned. What do you think? Uh, Fadi Harun, uh, no, no, Fadi Harun, it's not true, that last part is not true. You need to understand when Muhammad and the Sahaba came with the sword and they conquered the Christian lands, for example, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, when they came and they forced Christians to become Muslims, either you become a Muslim or you stay a Christian and jizya is forced on you, then also the Arabic language is forced. I mean, for example, Egypt, guys, the Egyptian Coptic Christians, the Egyptian Coptic Christians had their own Coptic language. 
Where is that language now? It's gone, right? Poor people, poor Christians. You know, the Christians in the Middle East, you have no idea, if you didn't study the history, they really had a really hard time under the Islamic rule, right? Under Islamic Sharia control of Muslims, right? So, no, that's not true. You should not accept Allah in any way, shape, or form as your Lord. Allah is not our God because Allah is never mentioned in the Old Testament as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And like I showed everyone, or mentioned to everyone, Deuteronomy 18.20, Muhammad would have been ordered to be stoned to death by Moses himself. You know? So Muslims should not even compare Muhammad to Moses because Moses himself would have ordered his men, his Israelite, fellow Israelite people, to go and stone Muhammad to death. But you know, when you are under the control of the Muslims, for let's say like a country like Egypt or Syria or Iraq, and when you have a Arabic language forced on you, and when you have to translate the Bible, let's say from the Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek to Arabic, and that happened in, let's say, in the 8th, 9th century, there was no other word to use for Allah. To make a right sentence in the Arabic, a good grammar sentence in Arabic, you have to use the word Allah. But that does not mean this, that those people actually worship the same God of the Muslims. No. They had to use a language that was never theirs. So, if there are still Christians in the Middle East who are using the name Allah, they were forced to use that. Because there is no other way to, to do it, right? So this is why still Arabic, poor Arabic-speaking Christians in the Middle East using the word Allah. But that does not mean they are worshipping the same Allah of Islam. Totally different God, right? So that's my answer to your question, my friend. Uh, what did Arab Christians before Islam call God in Arabic then? If not Allah, I mean. Uh, which Arabic Christians are you talking about, Fari Harun? Which Arabic Christians are you talking about? Are you talking about the Nasara? Well, the Nasara were not Christians, Mr. Fari Harun. The Nasara were a heretical sect in the time of Muhammad. Right? They were heretics. They were not Trinitarians. Right? If those people spoke Aramaic, they would say Aloho, right? Aloho. It, it's another word for Elohim, right? Elohim, Aloho. Or Allahi, Ilahi, right? Ilahi, Ilahi wa ma sabaktani, right? When Jesus is quoting scripture when he's on the cross, he's quoting scripture from the Old Testament. He says, Ilahi, Ilahi wa ma sabaktani. God, God, right? Why have you forsaken me? That does not mean uh, Jesus is crying for God. No, he was quoting scripture, right? But that does not mean it's the same God or the same Allah. La, la, la. Because Allah, God, la, is not a Elohim, right? So we are talking about a totally different God. An idol, the moon idol that existed before Islam, Muhammad took that moon idol and implemented in Islam and he created Islam. Uh, Fadi Harun, I and as, uh, as an Arabic speaking Christian, I rather use the word Rabb. Let me type it in a text, Rabb, which means Lord, right? It means Lord. So when I pray in Arabic, I say, Ya Rabbi, my Lord, Ya Rabbi. My Lord. So I invoke my Lord. Right? My Lord. Ya Rabbi. Not Rabbi. Like Rabbi. That's a different word, right? Ya Rabbi, my Lord. So the poor Christians in the Middle East, they were forced to use a language that was never theirs. But I thank God, guys. I really... Thank God that God gave me 
the sk their skills to know Arabic, to learn Arabic, right? So now we can use it to expose the fake prophet and of Islam and this fake satanic cult. Yeah, Abba, Ab, Abba means father, right? Al Ab. Al Ab wal Ibn wa Ruh al Qudus. Al Ab, father, the son, Al Ibn, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Al Ruh al Qudus. So even Muhammad stole the Ruh al Qudus from us, right? Al Ruh al Qudus, right? Which they call Jibreel. It's not Jibreel. Ruh al Qudus, guys, is the Holy Spirit who is God Himself, God Almighty. So here, if Moses would have heard the words of Muhammad, Moses would have ordered Muhammad to be killed by stoning. Right? Uh, Red Mouth Lah was the moon idol of the pagan Quraysh from Mecca. Right? Lah. God Lah, right? He was the supreme moon idol and he had three bird idols. Al-Lat, Al-Uzza, Wal-Manad. Let me try to explain to you. Let me show you guys just a second. Bear with me. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Guys, this is the tafsir for Quran, chapter 22, ayah 52. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. Okay. This is chapter 22, ayah 52. Let me explain my position. This is the tafsir for Surah Al-Hajj, ayah 52. From Azbab al nuzul al Wahidif. Very famous tafsir, very respected tafsir. In the Islamic world. So the story goes like this. Muhammad is in Mecca, he's talking to the pagan Quraysh and he wanted to reconcile with the pagans, right? So read with me guys, Allah exalted as he revealed to him then Surah an najm by the star when it said it. Surah chapter 53, the messenger of Allah, Allah prays on him. <laughs> <laughs> recited but when he reached have you thought upon a lad the three bird idols of Allah the moon idol of the pagans a lad al uzza wal manad the third the other the devil take notes guys the devil put on his thong what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said these are the mighty cranes the three bird idols daughters of Allah these are the mighty Gharaniq, cranes, bird idols, cranes, bird cranes, and their intercession is hoped for. This is the satanic verses, guys. This part that you see here, this is the satanic verses that was in the Quran that was later removed from the Quran. So here, Muhammad gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, his own tribe, right? So when the Quraysh heard, so when the pagans of uh, Quraysh heard, they were really happy, very pleased with Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad, you are wonderful. You're talking very positively about our three idols. And guys, Allah, al uzza wal manat they were the daughters. They could fly. They had wings. Pay attention, they had wings. So what did they do, those three bird idols? So when the pagans of Mecca prayed to Allah, the moon idol, they used to carry those prayers of the pagans all the way to the moon idol. So they were intercessors for Allah. So when Muslims say mushrik, mushrik, that doesn't mean a, uh, basically a, a pagan, no. Or idolaters, no. Mushrik means someone 
that you that, that an idol that intercesses for Allah the moon idol so even the pagans guys that they call pagans of Mecca they were a basically muwahidun billah so they were they they had tawhid as the muslims claim but they what is shirk so basically it's adding intercession to the supreme idol who is Allah did you catch it so when you are a mushrik, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have more than one, two, three, four, five, six idols. No, it's basically you are having intercessors, mediators like Allah and Uzza wal Manat who carry the prayers to the pagans. Sorry, uh, the, 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 the prayers of the pagans to Allah, the moon idol, the supreme moon idol. So when the Quraysh heard this, they were very pleased. And the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, carried on reciting until the end of the surah. And then he did sujood. He prostrated. He, this is an act of worship. He prostrated. And all the Muslims prostrated, did sujood. And the idolaters, the pagan of Quraysh, and everyone who was there, did sujood prostration. This is an act of worship. So here... Everyone became a mushrik, including Muhammad. Including Muhammad. That's what is said in the Arabic for this part. These are the mighty cranes, and their intercession is hoped for. Did you catch it? So then later, <laughs> after what happened that evening, Jibreel came to spank Muhammad. Uh oh. Jibreel came and said, What have you done, Muhammad? You recited to the people which I did not bring from Allah. So who brought it to Muhammad? It was the devil. Remember? The devil. It wasn't Jibreel. So Muhammad got spanked by Jibreel. And, and Jibreel said, And you said what I did not say to you, O oh Muhammad. So here, Muhammad got spanked by Jibreel, and he got corrected by Jibreel. Did you catch it? This is, guys, sorry if it took long, but this is basically, in a nutshell, my answer to your question. Line of Islam, call me, call me, Line of Islam. Mr. Jihadi keyboard terrorist, call me, call me. The Muslims became all jihadi terrorists. Story of my life, man. When we are alive, they become puppies. When we are not alive, they become lions of Islam. Now he's a kitten of Islam. But when we quit the live show, they became all lions. A true lion should have called me and protected, defended his fake prophet. Yeah, a troll. I know, I know. We are only left with Muslims who are nothing but trolls and cowards. Mew! Mew! <laughs> guys, I think we should uh, wrap it up. Thank you for watching, guys. Please, like I said, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and also click on the notification bell. Jesus is Lord. Islam is false. Muslims, please drop this fake, satanic, unholy religion, unholy Quran, unholy prophet. You heard the Sheikh, right? Unholy Quran. There's nothing called holy in Islam. Please drop this unholy cult. Come back to Jesus. Come back to your Lord and Savior. We are sinners. We can't help ourselves. King David was a sinner. Judah was a sinner. Abraham was a sinner. We need God to be reunited again with him. No one else can save us but him. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Thank you for watching, guys. Islam is false. Jesus is Lord. God bless everyone. Thank you for watching. And hopefully we will see each other again, Lord willing. Thank you for watching. God